The Brule St. Croix chapter of the North Country Trail Association led a tour of the historic portage between the Brule River and the headwaters of the St. Croix River on Saturday, July 4th. This historic portage provided a path from Lake Superior to the Mississippi River and was critical in opening up the United States to exploration and development. Briefly, the history of the trail, of course, it was used by the voyageurs and the, and the native people for a long time. And, uh, a lot, and then in 1933, they came through this area that, with uh, the, like the Daughters of the American Revolution and some other groups, the Forestry Service and those people, and they put some historical markers out on stones to celebrate certain famous people, which we will stop at those stones and look along the way. Those springs were among the last to utilize this trail. Shortly thereafter, the first overland roads were built in this area and the trail was abandoned. Joseph was, well, was also well known for his ability in building cabins and canoes for residents. So he, that's when it was reestablished for the first time. Since I, I never imagined the Daughters of the American Revolution were mm -hmm. I actually know a little about this story. There's two, two stones missing here along the trail. And the, 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 hypothetically, somebody, they thought, just because they sat for so long, somebody just rolled them down the hill. And a fellow hiking one day found this stone at the bottom of the hill and told uh, Chuck Zozel about it. So Chuck Zozel's son, who's a big guy, and another big guy, they got like an army stretcher, and they carried <laughs> oh, that yeah. stone back up this hill. Mm -hmm. And there's one more down there someplace that people have been looking for for years, but nobody's been able to find it. Lieutenant Allen and a party of U.S. soldiers traveling with schoolcraft and slightly behind him made the earliest note of seeing trout in the brule. The 1820 date shown on the boulder was probably a reference to a stopover schoolcraft made at the mouth of the brule 12 years earlier. Went down a portage that was used by the voyage us, right? And Native Americans. Oh, yeah. Green Batiste Cadot, 1890. Cadot was one of the two highly skilled woodsman brothers active in the fur trade at this time. Yeah. Oh, they got that. Deer use it? People use it? Yeah, it's just deep. Narrow. Very, very deep. Deep and narrow. This original path. It's been used for hundreds of years. Thousands, maybe. Well, they say they're not. <laughs> Michael Kiro, 1803. There was good news and bad news about Kiro. The good news was he wrote about his journey up the Brewer River and down the St. Croix in great detail. The bad news was Kiro was evidently not cut out for the life of a fur trader. He was often outfoxed in deals with the natives and met an early death about a year later. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. Jonathan Carver, 1768, an English cartographer and map maker. Carver was interested in finding the Northwest Passage to the Pacific Ocean. Returning to England, he published a book and maps which contain ample imagination along with maps and stories of the New World. Jonathan Carver. Everybody's excited by the blueberries. Hey, yeah. Are there any blueberries? Not yet. No, 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 no. Yeah. What do we got here? Yeah. Pierre and back to the Le kind of history, the burning of this. They said at one time possibly you know, Pierre Le Sewer, 1693. It was with a view to keeping open one of Duluth's old routes, Boise Brule and St. Croix River, that Le Sewer was dispatched by the authorities of New France. He built a stockade on Madeline Island for guarding the northern approach and another on the island in the Mississippi near the town of Red Wing, Minnesota. This it's got a big trunk to it. <laughs> Not to remind me, here comes John. He'll be able to remind Making him. peace with the ex Indians and exploring trade routes. So, cool. pretty significant trade route. Very popular through. with the beaver, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 100 beaver dams. That'd be a job. He had destroyed 100 beaver dams. Get to Duluth. When there are 100 beaver dams, though, I bet you could connect to here. Maki. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
on the book. You know, it's fiction. You just have to go online and just type in the information. You can get a permit and print it out online. But you need a permit, you're trying to license it. So where is the headwaters to the brewery? Well, right up in here. <laughs> right oh, where we this way. Yeah, if you, if you walked up here, the, the river would get narrower and narrower, okay. and finally it would basically just turn into a swamp. It, it isn't very far up here that it basically oh. stops. And then it just is a big kind of oozy bog. <laughs> oh, okay. With little 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 rivulets coming through it and stuff. So this is but it goes towards... all through here. I mean, it's all bog after this. It's this like, you know... Of people running away from the trees have been really. What's wrong with that? What is this? Some blueberries there. Oh, I see one. A blueberry. Why would you want that? Someone's plume. <laughs> This is a historical portage and it's very deep in here and I don't know if this erosion or it's just wear over time. It's a deep channel. Look at that. Look at that. Which hazel or growth from the tree this is a very old interrupted fern. You see? What is it? This is the St. Croix Lake, the headwaters of the St. Croix River. And there was a big battle in this lake between the Dakota and the Ojibwe years ago, somewhere. 